Try that again. Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 107 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilays. The comments are coming through now, but why isn't my tablet telling me that I'm live? Yes, it is. Uh, Angela, you get the first comment again. Hello again. Rich says hello again. Energetic Wave says hello. Flacaness says hi. Do you like a little vintage something? Something says Rich Mitch. I, I don't understand what that means. Hello says Everyday Products. Right. Uh, for the benefit of those of you watching live, thank you very much for tuning in to the fourth video that we are doing today. Uh, but for the benefit of those who have just stumbled across this video and are watching the recording, I should say thank you very much for tuning in. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Hearts, thumbs up, likes, etc. are very welcome. Questions, comments, I try to get round to uh, them as, as quickly as possible. What is the subject of this brief video? Um, from garbage to quality now, says Kim Dufts. Well, let us hope so. Um, I'm not showing the bottle because I haven't, I haven't got the full bottle and this is just a vial that I ordered for myself. This is the latest release from the brand Hiram Green and this release is called uh, Vivacious. And this really is a genuine case of is it going to be love at first scent or not because I have not smelt this. So I'm going to be smelling it for the first time with you uh, here on the video. And Oh, Rich says, I mean, I've got some vintage fragrances. Would you like a few decants? Oh, let's very, very kind of you to offer, but let's put that conversation to one side for the moment because we have to smell this thing, right? Um, and as per usual with videos on new releases, a few hours after the broadcast has completed, I'll also put up a blotter in the video description of how the scent has developed on... Um, did I say I'll put a blotter? I'll put an update in the video description about how the scent has developed on the blotter because we mustn't make up... Um, our minds about new scents just based on first impressions. Everyday Product says, could you do a review of Cartier Oud releases? I'm interested in the quality of those. I, I would love to, but it's hard getting samples of those. But I would have to say that from what I've smelled, I was quite impressed with them as well. Um, All Natural says, Kim, yes, you're right. And, and, and thank you for actually asking that. Because Hiram Green is a brand that I feel um, I, I need to give more time to. In fact, I think I ought to do a sort of Hiram Green showcase uh, video because I have got a few of their samples um, over the years. Most recently I think I ordered a batch of samples for myself last year and I was so impressed with with everything that I smelled. It was a friend that put me onto them because she likes, I think it's Moonbloom that she particularly likes and, and I was very impressed with that one as well. Uh, as far as I know, uh, Hiram Green is, is, is a person who is Canadian and moved from um, Canada uh, I'm enjoying this so much that I just bought you a coffee, says Keith. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you very much. I'll probably get the notification when the videos are finished. That's very, very sweet. I appreciate that. I will have a coffee after this is over. Um, and I love this one a lot, says Gunmetal. Full bottle purchase for me. Yes, so Hiram Green, as, as far as I know, is now based in the Netherlands. Um, released their first perfume, uh, as a brand, I mean, uh, in 2013, I think and now has got a, a, a really, really strong following. Um, and, and not surprisingly, every single perfume has got something very, very interesting to offer. Now, I haven't smelled this at all. So this is Vivacious from Hiram, Hiram Green, a release from this year. Ah, ah, <laughs> For those of you watching live, you know why I am breathing a sigh of relief because you will know what we've just reviewed, but never mind, let's not talk about that anymore. Okay, so what's here first is really, really realistic, fantastic whoosh of uh, violet leaf. And that, that, that really, really gorgeously, unmistakably green, outdoorsy, crushing leaves in, you know, in, in your hands feel of violet leaf. A lot of people don't like that note. Actually, Madame Persilet's being one of them which I think is one of the reasons why she never liked the original um, Fahrenheit. You don't get that whoosh of violet leaf so much from, from current Fahrenheit, but never mind. And, and I would say that actually th what, feels, what it feels like the segue is going to be, the transition, is to a, a violet uh, floral note, um, which is great because I think you can never have enough violet. But Vi violet is is a material, especially the floral um, note. Uh, it, it, it's not a natural, by the way. Uh, the, the, the the violet is 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 made up of. Actually, no. There's a point. So maybe there's a kind of isolate that has been used. 
to I'll have to I'll, we shall have to find out we shall have to find out what was going on here um, but what I was saying is that violet is very often used to convey a sense of uh, old-fashionedness retroness a sort of vintage feel you sometimes to comical effect uh, because the the violet which is quite often presented in a combination with rose evokes the idea of old-fashioned lipsticks that's exactly the effect that you get in lipstick rose that's exactly the effect that was exploited i think in the garlin perfume was it called french kiss or was it kiss kiss i can't remember french kiss and it's usually done in a wry way it's usually done in a knowing way now this is interesting because i don't get a retro feel to it at all and that could be because because of that opening of the violet leaf and there's there's a kind of tobacco-y honey feel to it as well you know how sometimes honey feels like it's got a burnt aspect to it that's coming through too but really 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 substantial without being heavy and actually perfect name for it. it it is it is vivacious it's sort of sparkling with with personality and charm i've got a tiny little bit of a blurb on it but i just want to see some of the comments that you've been leaving uh a really good quality brand says q george like slow dive by them yes i'd have to check my notes but i have a feeling that was one of the ones i was impressed with as well i really should do that that should be my summer break resolution is to to do a high rim green video because i think th this is precisely the sort of brand that those of us in the, the perfume community if there is such a thing need to do what we can to push with as much influence as as, as we have uh Dan Gunmart says, I've seen some YouTube videos about homemade violet on Florage. I thought it was interesting. Ah, okay. Love violet in scent, says Angela. Um, Everyday Products is having a conversation with Rich Mitch. That's fine. Angeline says, this sounds great so far. Love the sound of those notes. Honey has an astringent quality, says Rich Mitch. Yes, bees have no immune system. Um, okay. Uh, Gino says, hi there, I'm late. What are we smelling? We're smelling Vivacious from Hiram Green. And Frag Chaitan says, I would like a brand video on Hiram Green. I've only tried Dilettante thus far. Nice green, if I remember. Yes, that was a good one as well. Hiram Green's Slow Dive is a great honey perfume. This is, this is definitely Moorish. I think out of the ones we've done today, this is the one where I'll be thinking I want to give this one proper proper, proper skin time. Right, let's take a look at, as I say, the very, very brief blurb. Uh, Vivacious is a violet themed perfume that takes its cue from those prim Victorians who adored this precious flower so much. Updated for the 21st century, this scent has a happy and carefree flair, which I totally agree with. Absolutely. The fragrance opens with bright and joyful bergamot that seamlessly merges into a floral bouquet of flirty violet and spicy carnation. Waxy oris smoothly anchors this boisterous heart and soft powdery amber adds a warm and luxurious finish the the iris is interesting because i'm kind of getting things like because i was thinking honey but i'm also now thinking of mimosa which has a honey-like feel to it but iris now that i'm reading it yeah i guess so maybe there's something kind of powdery rooty about it this is this is really really special vivacious is an exuberant and joyful perfume perfect to zing your life okay slightly dubious verb there but never mind we'll let you off and the notes that they've listed are just five bergamot violet carnation oris and amber this is this is interesting this this, this is the one to come back to for sure okay let me go back to the video to see if i've missed anything what have we got uh, Tashara says, I tried higher and green frangipani perfume. Can't remember the name though. No, I'd have to check my notes as well to see which one that was. Definitely want to try this one, says Angela. Do you smell any vanilla in the amber accord, says Frackchite? I suppose, yeah, but you know, it's not sort of overly vanillic, just sort of sandal woody ambery, I think. But it's, 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 there's something cheeky about it as well, because I think, I think maybe it's, maybe, maybe now that I read Carnation, maybe there's something because now I'm sort of detecting the eugenol, of course, as soon as somebody says carnation. And I think that's got a kind of sharp wit to it. Th th this really is the perfect name for this perfume from based on smelling it so far. 
very, very impressed, really. Uh, an another success for Hiram Green, I think, which just makes me resolve even more. You had me at Carnation, says Angela, makes me resolve even more to do a, a Hiram Green video to sort of gather all of the few little sample vials that I've got and do a video, video for you. Okay, we are doing all right for time, which means that I think I'm going to bite the bullet and stop this video and come back with a fifth and final one for today uh, because I've also got two little samples of two brand new releases from MDCI which I haven't smelled at all so I would love to smell them um, you know on air for the first time with you uh, and also because we're now kind of heading into usual summer break territory which means I won't be able to do the videos as frequently at the moment I'm thinking that maybe over the course of August I might do perhaps two live videos but because uh, we're, we're going into summer break territory and because we've done okay for time today I think we will come back in a few minutes with video number five so thank you very much for watching this one if you would like to try and find the next one for those of you watching the recording it's MDCI's uh, La Surprise and Leme but for those of you watching live see you in a few minutes bye